Hey YouTube, welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna do a breakdown on my RC10 Ford Mid, another custom four wheel drive that I just finished building. So what's a RC10 Ford Mid? Well, if you saw my previous car that I just completed, uh, the RC10 B1.5 four wheel drive, it's basically uh, another version of that car. It takes uh, two T2 transmissions. It's a uh, double belt driven, um, but this time it's a little different. It's a uh, mid motor construction. So, if you remember from my previous car that I built, the RC10 B1.5 four wheel drive, um, this is the next step, the next evolution on that car. But the biggest difference in this car is that this is a mid motor build instead of the rear motor build of the B1.5. So when I started this build, I wanted to build a single belt drive, um, custom four wheel drive based on the RC10 T2. And the B1.5, the B1.5 is a rear motor um, car, but it's dual belt. And that car was a lot easier. It would have been a lot easier to make single belt. All I will have to do is just shift the, the pulley from this side onto this side and just make a single belt. And that was my intention with this car. But the problem is that, as you can see, if I wanted to run a single belt, I would have to do it from here to here, but the motor would have been in the way and the belt would have to go and go over the motor. It would have touched the motor in order to go to the front. So my intention was to build a mid motor, but since I was gonna run into that problem, I was just gonna make it a rear motor build with a flat chassis which i always wanted from the beginning even before when i built the b1.5 i wanted a flat chassis the only thing is that I already had the aluminum chassis so built it like that so talking to my friend mark westerfield he just told me to just you know make a dual belt and put a belt going up into a lay shaft and then another pulley to the front and this is what i came up with So the way that I achieved this, I mean, it's not the prettiest, but it works. What I did, I took the top half of a RC10 GT transmission, basically this part where the um, top shaft goes, cut it off the transmission case and put a top shaft in there. There's a complete top shaft in there and made it into a lay shaft. You know, I made holes into the motor plate and to hold this in place, ran a pulley from the inlet gear down here up to this top shaft. And then from there, all the way to the front transmission. So the, one of the biggest difference from my B1.5 forward drive and this car is that for this car, I chose a uh, RC10 GT um, tranny case instead of the um, RC10 T2 transmission um, case. Um, the reason I did that was because this transmission case sits lower on the bulkhead, on the RC10 T bulkhead, which makes the dog bones sit a little flatter. The front arms are from Dynotech Racing. I believe they're for the Outlaw. I bought these arms for the RC10 B1.5, but the way that car was built, they wouldn't work, um, but I still kept them. Try to uh, fit them onto my RC10 T. They're, uh, they're a little wider than the Klein arms that I have on my B1.5. So I figured I'd keep them put them on my RC10T, but they didn't work that good either on my RC10T, and I still had them, so I'm like, oh, why not use it on another project? So since 
I had so many parts left over from my RC10 B1.5 four-wheel drive. I decided to put this front end together just to, you know, just to have fun and see what it was like. And I come to find out that this config configuration um, makes the car, this front end as wide as a low C double X4, you know, which is a lot wider than my B1.5. So in reality, that's where the whole project started. It started off of this front end the shock tower is a custom shock tower by Factory Works. I spoke again to Jeff Millar, and since he already made me a custom shock tower for the B1.5, all he had to do was just add these two holes for the RC10, uh, these two mountain holes for the RC10 GT um, transmission case. So originally I wanted the shock tower without the holes, so I can make the holes myself. But he said he already had a template for the RC10 GT transmission. So he just cut all the holes and it fits perfect. As you can see, it holds the transmission perfectly in place. I had to modify the bulkhead because if not, the dog bones would have hit the the bulkhead so I had to shave it down a bit the chassis itself is uh it's made out of G10 I believe it's a 3.5 or 3 millimeter thick um G10 flat panel and this is for the um Yokomo YC10 you know um again from factory works um the only difference is that I order this without any holes because since it's a custom um, buggy, I needed to make the holes, the, the mounting holes myself, and uh, I needed to play with um, mounting positions and everything. So I told Jeff to just um, sell me the chassis without any mounting holes. And um, yeah, this is the this is made for the YZ10, the Yokomo YZ10. So it's the body and the under tray. It's all made for the um, YC10. Another big challenge that I ran into was the bracing of the chassis, because even though it's a 3.5 thick millimeter chassis, um, the nose is still, it was still flexing too much, both in the front and in the back. Um, I added these braces, which um, stops the shock tower from moving back and forth, it braces the shock tower. But at the end of the day, this first half of the chassis was still flex. And when a belt drive, you don't want a lot of flex on your chassis because it'll make the belt skip. It'll lose a uh, contact patch on the pulleys. So I had to figure a way to brace the whole chassis so that there's minimal flexing on it. So again, being that this is a custom build, um, I had to find a way to brace it. So I needed to brace from the transmission case to the chassis and from the chassis to the back transmission. And what I came up with was um, I used two um, SCX sand trusses as my chassis brace. This is a servo mount for a rock crawler that I use as a center um, brace um, mount. And then again, this is from my leftover SEX-10, my rock crawling build days. And this is uh, uh, another link, um, a Panhard link for an SEX-10 that I had laying around. As you can see, it fits perfect. I braced it from the rear transmission to the center brace. And then from the center brace, I added the two trusses all the way to the front. And these are um, Tamiya um, hauler um, hangers for the springs, for the leaf springs. And um, for some reason I had like six or seven of them laying around. Um, they fit on the um, transmission case mount so I just bolted it on there, 
couple of screws, front wheel nuts, and the whole chassis is braced. There's no flex at all. This thing is very um, stiff, very really rigid. I'm sorry, very rigid. And it's not going anywhere. You see no flex on the belt at all. So it works. In order for me to brace the, the nose plate, I use standoffs, M3 standoffs. And these are RC10 GT um, nose tube braces that I had. So I brace the nose through the shock tower onto this. So originally you will see a uh, um, nose tube going through the shock tower to that. But since I have all this stuff in the way, I couldn't do that. So I went from the shock tower, which um, Jeff Millar cut these holes on it too, from a template that I send them, and then just brace the shock tower to this. This transmission to this um, center brace, which is basically a, a servo mount. And then from the servo mount again, back to the transmission. And since this is it's not perfectly in the center, but it's kind of centered, that's why I only use one brace. And since the batteries on this side, I couldn't really use two braces, a lot of stuff in the way. But this configuration, I mean, this, by doing it this way, um, I get no flex at all. So it works out. As far as pulleys, I use um, Fingertech Racing um, pulleys. I think it's a company that make parts for drones and stuff like that. And I think battle ro um, robots, battle bots. And um, so what I like about these um, pulleys is that deep, these pulleys are a little stronger than the, the Sakura, Sakura um, pulleys that I used before. Um, and they use a 440 grub screw to hold the gear in place. As far as uh, lay shaft and, and um, an output shaft, I just cut the gear off from the top shaft. And I had like three or four top shaft from other builds. I cut the gear off from the top shaft and use the rest of it as a lay shaft. If you cut it very close to the gear, you have enough uh, sticking out of the transmission to make a, a output shaft. And that's what I'm using. The good thing about that is that the, the output shaft, the size, the bore size on, on these uh, finger tech pulleys is almost the exact same size as the thickness of the output shaft. So you have to just bore it out a little bit bigger in order for it to slip in. And um, it works pretty good. For turnbuckles, I use the J Concepts um, fin turnbuckles. And I use the more modern, um, bigger um, rod ends on the four corners. Of course, I use the 12 millimeter big bore shocks. A lot of stuff I already had, a lot of stuff that I've been collecting for years I already have. So these shocks are um, RC10 B74 shocks front and back. Gives me a good amount of droop. The spindle and the caster blocks are B RC10 B44 spindles and, and caster blocks. I use, uh, I believe they're um, RC10 T dog bones for the front and RC10 B44 dog bones for the back all CVAs. The bell crank again is the um, um, RC10 um, aluminum bell crank. They're from China somewhere. 
but I use that on uh, most of my bills. These are, they're great, they fit perfect. There's no play in them. I never had a problem with them breaking or anything. So yeah, I, why not go with something that is already proven? The battery was a little bit of a challenge to, to know where to put it. But if you can see from top, it's on one side, but on this side, I can mount um, the rest of the electronics, the servos on this side, uh, the receiver is going to be here. The speed control is going to be here. I know it's going to be a little bit of a challenge to get the wires through here and across here without touching the belt because it's very close. But it's doable. So I'm waiting on tires and I'm going to wait a little bit longer to do the electronics. So I'm not sure if I want to take apart one of my other cars to put electronics on this. Again, the servo is just a mock servo that I put in there. It's not going to be the servo that I'm going to use. I use aluminum servo mounts. And again, all these holes and there's all this stuff is, is mounted. It's all custom mounted. So you're going to see extra holes in the chassis and stuff because, you know, try to figure out where everything fits the best. And there's no blueprint for any of this, but I think it worked out pretty good. The rear arms are, um, again, Dynotech Klein arms. I've always been a huge fan of these arms. Um, they're strong, they're beefy. You know, you could cut them and they still have, and they're still plenty strong enough. So, as you can see, I mounted the RC10T2 bulkhead and transmission facing backwards basically so it's now it's a mid it's a mid motor four wheel drive car like a lot of the Kyoshos a lot of the um four wheel drive now um mid motor a lot of the four wheel drive cars that race at the Vintage Nationals that are basically mid motors or Yokomos so I wanted to build something that I could race at the Vintage Nationals if it's allowed. Uh -huh. If it's not allowed, I have a low CWX4 that I could very easily run. Um, my whole plan was to have an all associated um, lineup so I can race on, on Saturday, which is uh, all the race classes. Uh, hopefully, I'll be allowed to run one of these four-wheel drive in the 13.5 class on Sunday, but we'll see. The drivetrain on this car, for some reason, is a lot smoother or looser than it is on my B1.5. I think it has something to do with the way the other car has um, the lay shaft here in the middle. I think those plates that I use for the B1.5, they're not exactly um, square with each other, but this one is pretty smooth, as you can see. The belt is a little tight, but I think it's going to loosen up once I put some power through it. You know, it's, it's everything is new, everything is tight, but as soon as I put some power through it, everything is going to sit and, you know, be where it should be. As far as the body, I chose the uh, Yokomo YC10 Protec 4 body made by Bogey. The wing is, uh, I think it's a Proline wing, but the body and the under tray are YC10 Protec 4 um, body. And this body was not made for this custom chassis. I had to hack it up pretty good. Um, the whole front end I had to cut off. The back end I had to cut off. I had to make this opening for the belt. So it's hitting this belt. And it's hitting the front belt a little bit here. So I put a piece of Velcro in there. Hopefully that wouldn't make that big of a difference. Um, we'll see. If anything, I'm thinking about maybe using, um, you know, maybe open, uh, not opening, but like heating this up and making a bubble here in this area to avoid the uh, head in the belt, but it's not a big deal. We'll see what happens when I run it. Um, if it's a 
too big of an issue, then, you know, I'll modify accordingly. But, again, I chose my regular paint scheme, if you will. Front nose is white, the back is black, and with a yellow swirl in the middle. Um, I'm going to be running red wheels on this car. I'm just waiting on the tires, and um, this car's going to be running red wheels. These are carpet tra um, carpet um, tires. That's basically all I have. Um, I don't have any dirt tires because I don't run on dirt, but... I just order a set of uh, goosebumps. There's a local track here that is a, basically a test track for slashes out. So I'm gonna go have some fun on the dirt with that. And um, one of my friends, Mark Westerfields, he wants to put a put a series together where we will go to local tracks and and run our vintage cars. So let's see how that goes. I like the way this body looks on this car, nice and low. When I first saw it, I thought it was gonna be too tall for it, but came out pretty good. And it's a comparison of both of my custom four wheel drive, um, so team associated base cars they're both based on the rc10 t2 different approaches this is a mid motor and this is a rear motor and um you know i'm i'm satisfied with the way they came out of course there's always things that you want to improve on and change and you're not really 100 percent satisfied but I like how they came out. I've gotten a lot of comments, a lot of questions about these. They're not easy to build, but they're fun to put together, make them work. Um, I'm really excited to see how this runs. I know the this car is a lot wider than this one, and I can't wait to see how it handles. The only thing I have an apprehension about this one is that it doesn't lock. The, the, when you go this inner turning locks all the way in but the outer wheel the outer part doesn't lock all the way in so i think it's because since i took some kick up out of this and the distance between the steering linkage there's less of an angle on this car than on this car. On this car, there's more of an angle in the steering link. This one's a little straighter. Even though I use two angled um, rod ends, um, this one is a little, the angle is less aggressive than this angle. And this car is locks from both, both sides. This one doesn't lock all the way on this wheel. This one locks, but this one doesn't go all the way out. So, you know, I'll, I'll keep playing with it, but I'm not gonna worry too much about it until I put it on the track. If I see that it pushes, then, you know, I'll come up with another solution, but I wanna try it out. Like I said, I'm waiting on electronics. Um, take it to uh, RCHR, run it on carpet, make a nice slow-mo video on it. And then when the weather permits, I'll take it out on the dirt and play with it on the dirt, see what happens. Or YouTube. Thanks for watching. Again, this is Technic RC, and this was a breakdown of my custom RC10 4 mid four wheel drive car. Um, I hope you like, comment, and subscribe. Um, if you have any questions, please um, go to the comment section, and I'm usually pretty good about answering questions on there. So, till next time, bye.